Assalamualaikum and good day to my supervisor, Dr. Suri Bin Tagur Rashid, internal and external examiners, lecturers and fellow friends. My name is Aina Nadira, my metric number is 188838 and my research title is Carbon Quantum Dots Immobilized Metal Organic Framework 801 Composite for Detection and Removal of Copper Ions. So before I start, I would like to briefly explain what um, this research is about. So referring to the title, I am conducting a research on the detection of heavy metal copper in water and the removal of copper from water by using carbon quantum dots MOF801. So the abbreviation for metal organic framework is MOF, hence MOF801. So the objectives for this uh, research is firstly to investigate the phase, morphology and surface properties of pure and doped metal organic framework 801 via silver thermal method. Next is to study the effect of contact time, dose of doped MOF801 and initial copper concentration on efficiency of copper absorption from water. Um, the third objective is to study the effectiveness of doped MOF801 as copper sensor. And lastly, is to study the effect of regenerated dope MOF801 on the efficiency of copper absorption from aqua solution. So maybe some of you wonder why CQD MOF801? CQD MOF801 is carbon quantum dots, metal organic framework 801. So why did I use this? It is because it is easy to synthesize via solvable method. It is cost effective and the ability for this um, material to be reused after absorption so it can save a lot of cost instead of synthesizing a new absorbent for absorption and censoring for every cycle uh, and then it is environmental friendly and it has photoluminescent properties so this is my project flow um, firstly um, i will synthesize the mof one and then I synthesize the carbon quantum dots, CQDs, and then I dope the carbon quantum dots with MOF801. And then um, I send for characterization tests, which is FISAM, XRD, BET, FTR, and EDX, which I will get into. Uh, next, um, I conducted the absorption experiment for copper via CQD MOF801. Then I send the samples for AAS analysis, uh, which is the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Um, to analyze the copper concentration in the samples after the absorption and then um, I send it for fluorescent test for copper detection and lastly um, I regenerated the CQDMOF801 to identify the number of cycles for CQDMOF801 to still be able to absorb copper so this is my methodology this is how I plan this research um, same as before I synthesize and then I characterize and then I conduct the absorption experiment, and then uh, I conduct the copper detection experiment, and then I regenerate the CQD MF801. So the first one is the synthesis of MF801 doped with carbon quantum dots, which is CQDs. So this uh, MF801 is synthesized by a solvable thermal method. And what is solvable thermal method? It is actually a process of producing chemical compound carried at the boiling temperature of the solvent. So as you can see here, um, this is the list of the chemicals I've added. Uh, 1.16 gram of humic acid, 3.2 gram of zirconium chloride octahydrate, 14 ml of DMF, uh, diameter from a mic, and 14 ml of formic acid is added into one scott durian bottle and then it is heated in an oven for six hours at 130 degrees celsius and then the mixture is centrifuge for eight minutes at 10,000 rpm and then the mixture is washed twice using 50 ml of dmf for the first three days followed by 50 ml of methanol for the next three days and then the solution is heated overnight to dry it at temperature of 80 degrees celsius and finally we obtain the mof one powder and the next is the synthesis of carbon quantum dots. And the carbon quantum dots are synthesized to act as dopant for MF801 for, to have the luminescent properties for copper detection. So one gram of biochar is weighed and then um, it is mixed with 100 ml of solvent. The solvent is isopropanol and water with a ratio of 1 to 3. And then it's heated in microwave for only 5 minutes. And then the solution is cooled down to room temperature for about 20 minutes or so. And then um, the 
dissociate centrifuge for 50 minutes at 6,000 RPM and then the solubility is collected. So as you can see uh, below is the picture of the carbon cotton dots under normal light and under UV light. So this proves that the synthesized carbon cotton dots has luminescent properties. So next is doping of MOFA0 with CQDs. So the process of doping is very simple. Just immerse 100 mg of MOFA01 in 1 ml of CQD for 12 hours at room temperature. So this is in a small scale. So what I did was I upscale um, the uh, the weight of the MOFA01 and the volume of CQD so that I can synthesize in bulk at once. So this is the ratio, 100 mg of um, the MOF to 1 ml of the dopant. So next, the mixture is centrifuge at 10,000 RPM for 8 minutes. And then this, uh, the solution is washed with a mix. Uh, the mixture is washed with 50 ml of deionized water thrice, 3 times. And then the sublimate is discarded and the precipitate is tracked in oven for 5 hours at 100 degrees Celsius. And finally, we get the CQD MOF is rewind. So physically, um, the CQD MOF is rewind is the same as MOF is rewind, both in powder form and its white color. So next is the characterization of CQDMF A01. First is the FISM, Field Emission Scanning Electron Microscope. This is to observe topographic details of CQDMF A01. Next is the X-ray diffraction to check the fixed purity and the chemical composition. Um, next is the BT to measure the specific surface area and the pore volume. Um, next is the FTR analysis. This is to identify the molecular fingerprint of CQDM of 801. And lastly is the EDX analysis. This is to identify the elemental composition of CQDM of 801. So um, this is the characterization of CQDM of 801. First is the FISM. Uh, I conducted FISM at 10,000, 50,000, 80,000, and 100,000 magnification. So here we can observe that um, the CQD MF801 has octahedron shape with uniform size, and the size is ranging from 300 to 400 nanometer, which is quite similar with the size of pure MF801, which is ranging from 300 to 400 nanometer as well. Next is the SRD diffraction. This is um, as refreshing as you can see the characteristic peaks of CQDMF is your one appear at certain position. So the peaks are similar to the XRD peaks for pure MOF reported by Tani L 2018. Uh, next is the BET analysis. So from this analysis, we can uh, we obtain that the specific surface area of CQDMF A01 is 657 meters square per gram and the power diameter is 1.31631 meter. So this surface area of CQDMF A01 is found to be slightly smaller compared to pure MF which is 710 meters square per gram. This is because um, the CQD nanocrystals, the dopant nanocrystals, is lining the pore channels of the CQDMF A01 making it a bit smaller compared to the pure MF A01. Next is the FDR analysis. So here we can see that the peaks appeared uh, in the FDR spectrum is similar to the pure MOF A01 peaks and the carbon quantum dots peaks. Uh, next is the EDX analysis. Okay, so um, the chemical formula of MOF A01 is azeochromium 6, oxygen 4, OH4, fumarate 6. So, and the carbon quantum dust, of course, has carbon inside. So, from this EDX analysis, we can know that um, uh, the CQDM of S1 has zirconium, has oxygen, and has carbon. So, it is proof that um, the absorbent, the material that we synthesize is CQDM of S1. So next is the absorption of copper via CQDMF801. So this um, experiment is conducted in three uh, with three parameters. First is the effect of CQDMF801 dosage. Um, second is the effect of contact time, and third is the effect of initial copper concentration. So here is the effect of copper, the effect of CQDMF801 dosage on the absorption of copper. Here you can see the procedure, and from this experiment. Uh, we found that 8 mg of absorbent dosage has the highest removal efficiency, which is 54%. So here we can say that uh, the equilibrium is reached at 8 mg, thus um, the, the removal efficiency decreases after that, which is the 10 mg absorbent dosage. 
So um, here we can conclude that the copper removal efficiency increases as the amount of CQDM phase rate increases due to more active sites available for copper ions to bind. Um, but in contrary, the absorption capacity decreases um, because there are fewer copper ions per unit mass of CQDM FA01 as the dosage of FA01 increase. So next is the effect contact time. This is conducted at 30, 60, 90, 120, and 150 minutes. So here we can see that at contact time of 150 minutes with the absorbing dosage of 8 milligram volume of copper solution 10 ml and initial copper concentration 20 ppm. Um, it has the highest removal efficiency, which is 74.97%. Um, the absorbent dosage 8 mg is obtained from the previous experiment. So um, here we can conclude that as the copper removal efficiency increases, the contact time of the absorption via CQD MOF is also increased. Why? This is because more copper ions can be absorbed with longer contact time. So next is the effect of initial copper concentration, which uh, is been conducted at 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 ppm. ppm is parts per million, which is also equals to milligram per liter. So here, um, with the contact time of 150 minutes that has been obtained from previous experiment and also the absorbent dosage of 8 milligram and the volume of copper solution of 10 ml, which is kept constant, the initial copper concentration of 10 ppm has the highest removal efficiency, which is 79.95%. So here we can conclude that the initial copper concentration um, increases. As the initial copper concentration increases, um, the removal efficiency decreases. Why? This is because um, lower copper concentration has lower amount of copper ions present in solution, which means that 10 ppm of copper concentration has the lowest amount of copper ions compared to 20, 30, 40, and 50 ppm. So when we have less copper ions, there will be less copper ions to compete for the active absorption sites of CQDM F801. Uh, so next is the absorption kinetics. Um, this is uh, what I calculated to know um, what type of process is this absorption of copper via CQDM of phase one So it is found that um, this process follows pseudo second order model, which means that this absorption is a chemisorption process where the absorbates are held by chemical bonds. Next is the absorption isotherm. Um, the best fitting isothermal mo model for this is the Langmuir isotherm model, which means that this absorption process is a monolayer absorption without interaction among the absorbate molecules. Next is the copper detection via CQDM F801. So to um, to conduct the experiment, I conducted the fluorescent test um, and the Copper at seven different copper concentration, which is 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2 ppm. So, 4 ml of CQDM of H1 is added into all seven different copper concentration. And as you can see from the graph, higher concentration of copper resulted in quenching of the fluorescent intensity. So, this can be concluded that the lower the fluorescent intensity, the higher the concentration of copper in water. So, we can use CQD, this proof that we can use CQDM of A01 for copper detection in water or in solution, where higher fluorescent intensity means that there are less copper ions or copper concentration in the water. So next is the regeneration of CQDM of A01. So due to the restricted time, um, I only be able to conduct two cycles of regeneration with the parameters that has been obtained from the previous experiment with which is CQDM of is run dosage at 8 mg, 150 minutes contact time and issue copper concentration of 10 ppm. So this is the procedure of the regeneration and from the result we can see that um, second cycle of regeneration has the high has higher removal efficiency which is 90.88%. This shows that this CQDM of A01 can be reused for each cycle means that it can be regenerated for each cycle instead of synthesizing a new absorbent for each cycle. So this is very cost effective, um, it is not time consuming and it is very environmental friendly. So this is a summary of the whole project. The copper removal percentage increases as the CQDMF is one dosage increases. 
and it has reached a equilibrium at 8 mg and the copper removal percentage increases as the contact time increases next is the copper removal percentage decreases as the initial copper concentration increases and the, this absorption process follows pseudo second order model and lamar and uh, for fluorescent test we can obtain we can prove that lower copper concentration in water gives higher fluorescent intensity which means that this EQDMF01 can be used as copper detection and um, for the regeneration from the regeneration experiment second cycle of regeneration gives higher copper removal percentage which means that this EQDMF01 can be regenerated and reused for every cycle so that's all from me thank you